In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Ferro Quantum Max with the RevEng software. So it's short for reverse engineering. What this software does is get a point cloud. So it is just what it sounds like. It's a cloud of points that represents the surface of a part or assembly. And it takes that point cloud that you gather with either the probe or the scanner, which I'll show you in a minute, and turns it into a surface. So a surface you can actually use to create either an STL file, it's great for 3D printing, or a step file, which is great for running tool paths and making a part in something like Mastercam. And I'll show you a quick video clip of a tool path being run on this part uh, toward the end of the video. So where these point clouds come in really handy and you know where you, you can't really use traditional measuring tools very easily is a part like this. Now this is just a garden alpaca, but imagine it's the fender for a Ferrari or something or some odd shape that you can't readily define with planes, circles, cylinders, that kind of thing. So this is gonna gather all the points on this surface, turn it into a surface that we can turn into a useful file for manufacturing. Our actual equipment here, I've got the Ferro Quantum Max. It makes an irritating sound. When it goes in the wrong direction, it essentially just kind of floats in air. I know it's not totally on the screen here. As far as the actual equipment, We've got the laser on top. I'll point it, hopefully it won't ruin my camera. We got a probe right here that we can use to measure anything, right? So they don't always sell these with the laser. Some people just have the probe and you can do a lot with just the probe. So I'm gonna go to my software. I'm gonna do something called create a clipping plane. So if I just scan this part, right, it's going to pick up everything on the table too, including the table, it might pick up my laptop, my mouse over here. We don't want that to happen. So I'm going to move the part out of the way and then I'm going to probe my clipping plane. So I just put the probe on the table, pull the green button in a minimum of three places, but it could be more. And I'm going to put, pull the red button when it's above the table. It's important to do that because you want to tell the computer which direction you're working in. So when you just tell the computer there's a plane here, it doesn't know whether you want to get the points beneath the plane or above the plane. So pulling that red trigger tells it, hey, I want to work above the plane selected. So now I'm just going to hit start measurement. Now I can't do a screen recording on my laptop here. I just got to show it in frame because it uses a ton of memory when it's picking up all these points in this point cloud and it slows it way down. So I'll zoom in on this computer screen right here, but you'll pretty much get the gist of how, how this works. I'll put my garden alpaca at the very edge of the table so I can kind of work around it. And, you know, it helps if you can lift it up too, so you can see under it a little bit. Oh. I'm going to hit start measurement on my computer here. If you notice, now we've got a blue and a red uh, line on the part. What we want to do is line up that red crosshair with the blue line. Okay, so when they're lined up, that is the proper range for scanning. There's also a light on the top of the probe here that turns green and red. So a couple different ways you can tell. It's a probably about four inches away from the part is the optimum distance for scanning. Too far away or too close and it won't get any useful points. So I'm gonna hit the green button and we're gonna start taking points. All right, so I'm just gonna move up So, why well, I paused right there for a, a second and changed the settings, I had it set at the points 30 thousandths apart, which is, would be sufficient for what I'm doing here, but it doesn't look super good on the screen. They're so far apart, it's very faint, unless you uh, zoom way out. So I increased the resolution to 1 thousandths, just so it would look more like it was painting the part. The downside to using a smaller resolution, the points being closer together, so it's way more taxing on your computer. 
So you need it, if you have fine details, you need a capture, say like a thread or something. But on curvy surfaces like this, probably not totally necessary. So just for the camera, hopefully it looked pretty good on the, the screen there. So I can zoom way in. I'm gonna zoom in here. The closer you get, you can actually see the points, right? So I'll get more into uh, editing the actual surfaces in a minute. What I'm gonna do here is finish scanning the part. I'll fast forward through it because it's pretty straightforward how it actually gets scanned. And then I'll go back to the software and do a screen recording of that so you can see how I'm editing it. So I'm finished with the scanning. I turned the screen recorder on, so I'll show you in a second what's going on on the computer. It's really not, the scanning isn't so bad. I mean, there's not much to it. It's essentially painting. You can watch the computer screen and just make sure you get all the points you need. If you miss a spot, which I may have, you can always go back and get more points in a separate scan. So let's move to the computer screen here. What I'm gonna do is finish this measurement. I'm gonna select all three of my scan groups here. And it looks like we've got pretty good coverage of our alpaca, right? So what I'm gonna do is go to mesh, and I wanna generate a mesh with these three groups. And I forgot to mention this, if you zoom in, way in, you can see all of the little points that make up this point cloud. And then the striations are just the different scan groups kinda overlapping with each other, okay? So let's generate that mesh. So on the computer screen here, we can see our mesh. This is where it joins all of the points together. Now I had to turn the screen recorder off again because it, it's really taxing on the computer to create the mesh. And it looks like I missed a big old spot right here, all up through its ears. And then of course the bottom is also not finished. Now there are definitely ways to fix that, for now, I'll just show you. I'm gonna hit done with mesh. I'm gonna deselect the scan group, so I'm just seeing the mesh. You can fill holes in the mesh, but sometimes it'll be good, sometimes it'll be bad. It actually filled that pretty good. It interplated between the surfaces, and maybe we can get this away with the same thing up here. Those are fixed. If you try to fix a very large hole, it's gonna take a long, long time. So this we could probably fix. It's just a flat bottom, no big deal. If we tried to fix this, it's gonna take a little bit longer, and I seriously doubt it's gonna give us exactly what we want. Oh wow. Actually, that worked just fine. Huh. So in the next video, I'll talk about alignments. So it is possible to measure, you know, you can scan this and then flip the alpaca over and then scan this and then join the two point clouds together. It's actually really easy to do. You just select a couple points and the computer does a best fit and fits all that stuff together. It's pretty cool. You end up having to do that with most parts, right? Unless you can get it up in the air and scan all around it. Uh, you'll end up having to do at least two scans and you can do many, many more, especially maybe if you have like a really big part. So from here, I'm gonna go to the File tab and we can export this as a STL. And then we could go to a 3D printing program, whatever you're using. We happen to have Iger, uh, which is used for the Mark Forge printers. So I'll go to that website and just show you real quick how you'd set this up for 3D printing. So this object is probably a little large for our 3D printers, but what I'll do here is get it in the right orientation. It's gonna be a little tricky because it doesn't have any uh, real planes. And then I can just scale this down. And then this is ready to 3D print with no further you know, action taken, okay? So we went from an object, scan, 3D print. We could also, and I'll go back to the software here, go to the model, sketch NURBS, and then do an automatic surface uh, creation, 
and this will give us a step file, which is used in things like Mastercam. You can also import it into SolidWorks and edit it with the mesh tools in SolidWorks. So this is our step file. I'm gonna hit done. All right, so now we've got our NURBS model. This can be edited directly in RevEng. You could grab these vertices and move them around, but you could also edit it in things like Mastercam and SolidWorks. So you can see here, I can save this as a step file, and then I'm just gonna open it up in SolidWorks, show you what it looks like, and then I'll play that short video of Mastercam running uh, tool paths. And here's what it would look like in SolidWorks, right? So you don't have features over here to work with. You can uh, turn it into a mesh file. So I've got my mesh modeling tools up here. We convert this to a mesh body, and that'll give you a little bit more, uh, a few more options for editing, editing, editing it. Uh, but it's still not going to be perfect because, again, you're not dealing with planes and cylinders and stuff. You're dealing with curvy surfaces. So right now I'll play that quick video of the Mastercam toolpath. You can import this into Mastercam and run toolpaths, right? You don't have to have a drawing or any dimensions, really. I mean, you need to know how big it is to know the stock size, but all the information would be in the model that you would, you know, the step file, okay? So that's it for this video. I'll make more of these coming soon. Just a quick introduction into the Faro quantum arm and then the laser scanner and the Rev Engineer. Uh, it's a really powerful software. I'll make more videos about the alignment and all the cool stuff you can do with it and how we can integrate it into other uh, machine tools and CMM tools and design tools. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out the channel for more stuff coming soon and leave a comment down below.